Meeting call to order. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Here. Councilmember Chapman. Here. Councilmember Clayton. Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn is absent. Mayor Moore. Here. Please stand for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection. We will now salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 3rd, 2023, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. We are now on to proclamations. At this time, the Mayor and City Council would like to present proclamations recognizing the Asbury Park Beach lifeguards. Okay, so we're all gonna come down there. Why not the truth? Thank you for doing what you do, because if you weren't here tonight, we'd have nobody here. <laughs> this, this is the first time ever. We've they're had all no public. outside. I don't know why they don't want to come in. Oh, they're no. all outside? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And lock the doors. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, if you want to come up and start. And bring everybody up. Do we have somebody to take pictures? I'll, I'll take One pictures. Okay, no problem. Why don't you move that slide so we can see the day? So they're all right here. Yeah. Oh, they're all right here. On July 12th, in the afternoon of July 12th, a elderly gentleman collapsed right on the shoreline. Um, two of our lifeguards, Kira Dunnigan and Carly Wright, responded immediately. When they got to the man, he was unresponsive. He had no pulse, no breathing. Carly is an EMT certified, and she's also a physician's assistant, so she knew exactly what to do. She immediately started CPR, assisted by Kira Dunnigan right here and they performed CPR on this man. Tom Rant arrived a few minutes later and administered oxygen. They continued CPR on the man for several minutes and he eventually regained a pulse and started breathing again. Asbury Park EMTs were called. Um, they responded immediately and again, after a few minutes, they arrived at the beach and they transported the person off the beach and monitored him and kept him going until they got to the Jersey Shore Medical Center where my understanding that he was uh, discharged a few days later. Um, had it not been for the quick action of Carly and Kira and Tom at, at that time, um, like I said, that, I don't think that man would have made it. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but CPR, just CPR being performed, the odds of recovering from that are very slim, you know, five to 10%. If, if an AED is administered, the odds go up on that. So them responding so quickly and doing what they did really did save that man's life. It was really an amazing feat that they kept their cool and did exactly what they had to do to get that man going again. So they took a lot of credit for that. I'm making you ready. Yeah, so. Whereas Asbury Park lifeguards, Carly Reimer, Kira Dunnigan, and Tom Rant did the unimaginable and saved a human life. Whereas on July 12th, 2023, an elderly gentleman collapsed on our Second Avenue beach and whereas the individual was unconscious with no pulse and whereas lifeguards Carly, Kira responded immediately began CPR on him. And whereas lifeguard Tom Rant arrived on the scene and administered oxygen and the gentleman began to show signs of recovery. 
And whereas Asbury Park firefighters arrived and stabilized the individual and safely transported him to Jersey Shore Medical Center for further treatment and recovery. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Moore and the Asbury Park City Council acknowledge the quick and skillful response by Carly, Kira, and Tom, who undoubtedly saved a human's life. The city of Asbury Park is fortunate and grateful to have such dedicated and courageous personnel on our lifeguard squad. And Joe, thanks to you for the training that you provide to these lifeguards and also to our EMTs who arrived, I think in record time, just two minutes after they were called. All I can say is that I'm uh, very proud of the other uh, employees of the city. Uh, we do a lot of training, and for us to implement that training, um, it, it can be very difficult on the beach. It's always it's a very dynamic environment, but I'm very proud of everybody uh, who was involved, and I wouldn't want to work with anybody else. done this job more than uh, 26 years, and there's no one else I'd rather be with than this crew. I've been here for six now. One of the captains on Third Avenue for the last four. And every moment with these people is just high pressure with high response. And it's always positive. Thank you. Four days later, on the evening of July 16, at approximately five minutes to eight in the evening, our late crew was clearing the water. Our late response team was clearing the water of all the bathers. And two, what we found out later, were inebriated gentlemen decided they were gonna ignore the lifeguard instructions and were gonna swim further out. They swam further out and lifeguard Alexa Hausneck noted that one of them was having some difficulty. So, she immediately responded and went into the water, got a hold of the guy, and by the time she got to him, he had already gone under several times and swallowed a lot of water. By the time she got him in, he was on the beach again, unresponsive, no breathing, no pulse. Uh, assisted by uh, lifeguard Jerlyn Donakin, uh, who called 911 and assisted her in the CPR. They again got the guy going, they, they, got, they got a pulse back, they got him breathing, and again, our Asbury Park Fire Department responded immediately, came down there, and Tom uh, also arrived on the scene and aided in the CPR of this man, and then aided in having the man removed from the beach, and then the fire department again monitored him and did what they needed to do to keep him going until they got him to the hospital. And again, we had a great outcome there. He was also discharged a few days later. So, uh, what they did, had that incident happened five minutes later, the lifeguards would have been off duty and, and that guy would not have made it. And he said, they responded, Alexa and Jerlyn are both rookie lifeguards. Um, Alexa is also an EMT. She swims from Monmouth University and is also an EMT. But again, they didn't panic, they didn't choke, they did exactly what needed to be done. She, she you know, assessed them, started the CPR, Jerlyn called 911 and did what she ever, whatever she had to do to assist Alexa in, in keeping that man alive. So, and, Again, Tom, you know, he's, he's a veteran lifeguard. He knew exactly what to do. So when he arrived on the scene, it was very important in assisting Alexa, keeping that guy alive. Great job. Thank you. So whereas the Asbury Park Library, excuse me, lifeguard Alexa Houtsneck and Jerlyn Dunnikin and Tom Brandt took extraordinary action to save a person in need, and whereas on July 16, 2023, lifeguard Alexa Hausnick and Geraldine Dunnikin were clearing the water before going off duty when they saw two individuals attempting to swim out into the ocean on the Sixth Avenue beach. 
And whereas the lifeguards continued to clear the water, they noticed that the two swimmers were ignoring their commands while whistling and calling to them on the PA system. They determined that one of the swimmers was having difficulty getting back to shore. And whereas lifeguard Alexa Hausnick swam into the water to rescue one of the swimmers, but unfortunately, he became unresponsive when they got to shore. And whereas Alexa immediately began CPR on the individual as lifeguard Jalen Dunnikin called 911. Alexa continued CPR aided by Jerlyn and lifeguard Tom Rant. And whereas Asbury Park firefighters arrived and stabilized the individual who was showing signs of recovery. They quickly removed him from the beach and transported him safely to Jersey Shore Medical Center for full recovery. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Moore and the Asbury Park Council acknowledge and thank Alexis Hausnick, Jerlyn Dunnigan, and Tom Rant for their dedication and fearlessness in protecting beachgoers. Thank you. We're now on to special events applications. First application before you is for the Heck Street Block Party on September 30th. Next is the Solis Sunrise Walk on October 1st. The annual Zombie Walk on October 7th. Dia de, las, de los Muertos, Asbury Park Day of the Dead on October 4th. And the Associated Humane Society Society's Bark Bash on October 28th. 
the health and wellness beach day retreat for educators on August 26th. And lastly, a wedding on October 21st. Are there any questions? No. No, we're good. Thank you. All right, Thanks, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. So we're now on to matters from City Council. Council Member Bez Anderson. Nothing for me. Thank you. Council Member Chapman. So I'd like everyone to know that the Asbury Park Back to School Fair will be on August 19th from 1 to 4 in Springwood Park. Um, there'll be games, rides, free food, a petting zoo, and giveaways. I also just want to remind everybody about the Asbury Park Film Challenge, a three-week challenge to create a three-minute film, which started yesterday. Um, Concerts in um, Springwood Park on Monday nights and concerts on the boardwalk on Friday nights. Concerts at the Turf Club on Tuesday nights. All for free, so get out and enjoy this beautiful weather listening to some great music. Thank you. Councilmember Clayton. I don't have anything tonight, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Moore. Nothing, thank you. Thank you. We're now on to matters from the city manager. I have nothing to say. Thanks. Matters from the city attorney. I have nothing for me. Thank you, Fred. We're now on to public participation. May I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public participation portion is now open. Any member of the public who wishes to speak, please use the microphone, state your name and address for the record, and there will be a three minute time limit for each speaker. Okay. Uh, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. I have an article here from 1983. And if you read the whole article, redevelopment really started in 1984. So 30 years later, that makes it 2014. I'm not a mathematician, but I could do, do those numbers. So if redevelopment is over, what's going on? Why are we still talking about it? I mean, it's 30 years, according to this article. And there's an empty boardwalk, and it says that we got a facelift coming. So, wait, what years are right? What years are right? Is this right? I, I'd like to know, because everybody is calling about the tax increase. Not, I don't know, I thought this room would be full tonight with the way people were talking about their taxes. But it's not so. I guess they just talk. But it's really outrageous what's going on. I mean, I'm not so bad, but when I hear what happened in certain areas, it's really bad. So how does taxes go up like that? It can't be only the school. I mean, uh, the tax rate is something you fool around with. I know that. But what's going on? Why is everybody getting such a high increase? I saw the back of the tax bill. It said that 48% uh, was a school tax. I mean, there must be something you could do here. We're not a divided city. We are connected to the schools. So what's going to happen? If the school tax keeps going up, is it a game? I mean, like, I don't, I don't get it. But you have to do something about it. Make a statement. Say you don't like it. Say you're going to do something about it. Nobody hears anything. Just keeps going on and on. So is this article right, 1984, or not? I asked Fred. He wasn't here then. There was a bunch of lawsuits from 83 yes. to 84 and the Superior Court, but in the end, Carabetta won. So how does that work? What's, I mean, like, you have nothing to do with it. You've got to clean up the mess about redevelopment. You keep talking about it, affordable housing, this, that, but our taxes keep going up. Why is that? I mean, like, it doesn't make sense that we're making all this money. We never get a report. We have to go online to see it. 
There's a parking report, a beachfront report. We used to get all that. And now everything seems to be a secret. It's done. I don't get it. And I don't want to go on a computer and time, look for Time it. is up. Okay, Rita, uh, your time's up. Yeah, the 30 years, it's not the first time the issue's been brought up. Warner's brought it up, other people brought it up. I'm not going to answer. What we're under right now is the 2002 waterfront redevelopment plan. But the question is if it, if it was declared blighted in 1984 and 30 years, it's supposed to be up in 14. What I'm going to do is get in touch with the redevelopment attorney and have him put something in writing. Because I'm going to say it the wrong way, so I'd rather have it be said the right way, how the years overlapped. So we'll get you that. As far as the taxes, Everybody got a letter with their tax bill explaining exactly what percentage went uh, under one category. And uh, the county budget went up 0.67%. Uh, the district school budget went up 31.34% because of the S2 bill. The local municipal uh, purposes budget, that's ours, we went up 2.86%. The library budget went up 10%. That's by state law. It has to go up based on the rateables. Whatever the rateables are, they get a percentage of that. So the more rateables that come online, the more money they get every year. So that's state law. The county health budget went down 2.68%. The county open space fund, which is kind of like I always laugh about because we have no open space, but yet the city of Asbury Park pays in $695,000 to it every year, went up 10%. So uh, that's basically it. All the numbers are there in black and white. If you need another copy, we'll have it sent to you. But you have to have a solution here. We're, we're working on it. And I think the Board of Education is working on the S2. And uh, I believe the S2 bill would have been a lot higher if our Senator Gopal didn't get like $5.6 million from the governor to help the city even more. It was going to be worse than this. So again, if it's a terrible law passed without thinking about what it would do to towns like Asbury Park. So, uh, and there's, a, unfortunately, there's another two years to go with it. So, uh, we're why, do, why do we keep getting reassessed every year? Because we're in the county assessment program. That's what we opted into, Rita. That's not a good thing. Okay, well, huh? so, some towns say it's good, some towns say it's not. But thank well, you for your questions. Um, you got to do it okay. Seeing nobody else, motion to close. Unless I'm sorry. To, nobody here. I know. Well, I didn't want. Were you going to ask anything? Yeah, okay. Seeing nobody else, motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public participation Aye. portion is now closed. Thank you. We're now on to the minutes. I have the Municipal Council Executive Meeting Minutes and Regular Meeting Minutes from the July 26, 2023 meeting. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to consent agenda resolutions. All matters listed on the consent agenda are pre presented collectively to the City Council and will be considered for approval with one vote. These matters are considered to be routine in nature and there will be no individual discussion of these items. If discussion is desired by one or more council members as to any particular item, then said item shall be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. On consent agenda tonight, we have resolutions 2023-399 through 2023-401. Do I have a motion for consent? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to individual resolutions. I have resolution 2023 402, a resolution approving payment of bills. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2023 403, a resolution authorizing the purchase of new hood assembly needed for DPW garage truck number nine. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2023 404, resolution authorizing the purchase and installation of two automated license plate readers, ALPR, for the police department. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2023-405, resolution awarding a contract to GMH Associates for thickener mechanism and drive units needed at the wastewater treatment plant. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Mayor Moore. 
Yes. Resolution 2023-406, a resolution awarding a bid for roadway improvements program. Move it. Second. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2023-407, resolution for third and final renewal of a contract with the state of New Jersey for the use of Bangs Avenue Garage. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2023-408, supplemental resolution authorizing the issuance of one or more series of additional non-recourse redevelopment area bonds of the City of Asbury Park in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed 4,500,000 block 4002 additional infrastructure project in connection with a project being undertaken in the city by Asbury Partners LLC and as a portion of non-recourse redevelopment area bonds of the city. Move it. Second. Councilmember Vez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. No one has anything else. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Me Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.